Hey y'all, welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. On Mondays, we like to keep it super simple, so we just had some breakfast for dinner. That is my go-to on a busy night. So I toasted up some of these Everything Seasoned Bagels with Asiago cheese, and there is a layer of cream cheese on the bottom. It also is layered with some crispy bacon. And then for the eggs, a lot of times when I'm doing like a breakfast sandwich, I like to cook them up omelet style. I just think it's easier to serve that way. And then I'll just cut it up into three or four portions. These remind me a lot of like McDonald's or Hardy eggs except I like these a whole lot better. So to go along with that I also made some hash brown patties. These are just the ones that you find in the freezer section. I'm using the ones by great value and I cooked those up in my air fryer at 400 degrees for about 13 minutes flipping halfway through and they were perfectly crispy. Loved them. Also have some ketchup of course to go along with that and then lastly I just have a little bowl of fruit so we have some sliced bananas and some sliced kiwis. On Tuesday, I tried a new recipe for a crock pot cube steak and gravy. So I have my four pieces of cube steak and then I'm going to be taking a can of cream of chicken soup and I'm just going to dump that into the bottom of my crock pot. You could also use cream of mushroom if you wanted to. And then I'm sure this is going to shock a lot of you guys, but I added in a can of this French onion soup, but I did pour it over a fine mesh strainer so that I could get all the onions out. If you are new here, I don't cook with onions. I absolutely hate them. And then I'm also going to be adding in a package of this brown gravy mix. I did get a lower sodium version because I didn't want this to be overly salty. In the comments, some people said that it was a little salty, so that's why I did that. And then I'm just going to whisk that until all the lumps are gone and it is smooth. And then I'm going to add in those cube steaks. And I tried to cover it up in the gravy, but the meat was kind of falling apart and it was kind of difficult. So I'd probably just skip that next time. Probably didn't make too much of a difference anyways. Then I'm just going to cook that on low for four hours. And then when the four hours is up, I'm going to start trying to thicken up this gravy. So to this little mixing bowl, I'm adding in three tablespoons of cornstarch, and then I also added in three tablespoons of water, and I'm just going to stir that until it is pourable. So I'm going to turn my crock pot on high, and then I'm going to pour in that cornstarch slurry, and I'm just going to slightly mix it in, and then I'm going to pop my lid on, and I'm going to let that finish cooking for 30 more minutes, and then it will be ready. So here is my plate. I have one of those cube steaks and I just topped it with some parsley for color and I served it with some egg noodles, which I spooned plenty of that gravy over the top of, which thickened perfectly, by the way. You could also do mashed potatoes or rice and then I have some steamed asparagus on the side. We love this recipe. I would definitely be making it again. Super easy and I know a lot of times with cube steaks, it can get kind of chewy, but it was tender and I thought the texture was perfect. Wednesday was our meatless meal of the week, so I started off by melting some butter into my pan, and then I'm going to be using this package of rice aroni, Spanish rice with vermicelli, vermicelli, I don't really know how you say it, but I'm just going to saute that around in the butter for a few minutes until it starts to turn golden brown, and then I'm going to dump in some water, followed by the seasoning packet that the box came with. I'm just going to give that a quick little stir, and then I'm going to let that come up to a boil, pop my lid on, and then I'm just going to simmer that until all the liquid has absorbed. Then I'm just going to fluff it up a bit and then I'm going to start adding a few things to it. So I'm going to be using this red enchilada sauce. I'm going to add in a half a cup of that. I'm also going to be using a can of pinto beans that I have drained and rinsed as well as some corn that I have drained. And this is going to be the filling for some enchiladas. They're called no roll enchiladas so they're more kind of like a taco but who cares what it's really called. So to a 9 by 13 baking dish I'm going to spray it with some nonstick cooking spray and then I'm just going to take some some smaller size tortillas and add that filling to it as well as some shredded Mexican cheese and I'm just going to repeat that. Next, I'm just going to take that remaining enchilada sauce and I'm just going to pour it all over the top of these tacos as evenly as I can and then I'm just going to cover those with full and they're going to go in the oven at 350 degrees for 30 minutes. When the time was up, I removed the full and topped it with some more shredded cheese and I just popped it back in the oven for about five more minutes just until that cheese was melted. How yummy does that look? So here's my plate. I just have one of those tacos. I completely forgot to top it with sour cream. That would have made it even better, but these turned out good. We all enjoyed it and it was so easy. I also just served it with some guacamole that I quickly made up earlier that morning. And then I have some tortilla chips for dipping. 
On Thursday, I cooked a whole Popeyes inspired meal. So I have some fried chicken tenders, blackened ranch, some Cajun fries that I cooked in my air fryer, some homemade biscuits with honey drizzled over the top, and then some red beans over rice. I have made a whole separate video on how I cook this meal. So if you have not seen that yet, I will have a link to it down in my description box. This fried chicken and ranch was the best that I have ever made. So trust me, you are gonna wanna save those recipes. Friday's clip is pretty short. My phone was not wanting to record on this day. I was having storage issues, but we had like a lunchy type dinner. So we just took those leftover chicken tenders from the day before and I heated those up in the air fryer to crisp them back up. And I served it on a warmed up tortilla with some lettuce, that leftover ranch and some shredded cheese. So good and so easy. And I just served it with some cloths and pickles on the side. On Saturday, I made some baked spaghetti. It's been a long time since I have made this. So I started off by browning up one pound of ground beef that had been seasoned with some garlic salt and onion powder. And then I drained off all the grease and then I added in some spaghetti sauce. So I used a jar and a half because I had a half of a jar sitting in my fridge that needed to be used up. But next time I make this, I'm going to use two full jars of sauce because we just like ours to be extra saucy. So now that the meat sauce is done, I'm going to cook up my spaghetti. So to some boiling salted water, I added in 12 ounces and then I drained it and added it to a mixing bowl. In the bottom of that bowl, I had an eight ounce block of cream cheese and then I just let the pasta sit on top of it for a few minutes so it could kind of melt it down. And then I just stirred all the noodles to coat and season with a little bit of Italian seasoning. So I have two eight by eight dishes out. I have one so that I can bake it now and then I have one so that I can freeze for later or to give away to somebody. I haven't decided yet. A lot of times I do cut my recipes in half. Um, our kids are young. They're just two and four, so they don't eat a whole lot. And plus, Josh isn't a huge spaghetti fan, so I knew he wouldn't eat like the leftovers of it. So this is what works for us. I have just layered some meat sauce on the bottom, topped it with the spaghetti, and then I'm just going to top it with the remaining meat sauce. Lastly, I'm just going to top these with some cheese. I used this pizza blend from Kroger's for the first time, and I would not buy it again because it has some smoked provolone in there, which is pretty overpowering. I don't mind it, but my kids did not like it at all. So next time, I would just use mozzarella and Parmesan. But the one in the glass dish went in the oven at 350 degrees for 30 minutes. And then the one that is going to be froze is going to be left unbaked for now. I'm going to cover it tightly with some cling wrap for some extra protection, and then I'm just going to cover it in some tin foil. I do like to label my freezer meals. That way I don't have to uncover everything trying to figure out what's what. And I also like to put the cooking instructions on the bottom. So here's the one that came straight out of the oven. I just topped it with some parsley for color. And then here is my plate. This turned out so yummy, just the way I remembered it from before. I love this recipe, couldn't be easier. And I just have a really simple salad on the side. All it is is some lettuce and carrots and that leftover blackened ranch from earlier in the week. And then I have some garlic garlic breadsticks. On Sunday, I made a peanut butter chocolate eclair cake. I have made this recipe once before a few years ago and it was a big hit. So to a large mixing bowl, I'm just gonna be adding in two boxes of instant vanilla pudding mix, followed by three and a half cups of milk and then a one cup of peanut butter. Then I'm going to get out my electric mixer and combine this. At first, it sloshed everywhere. So what I recommend doing is just turning off the power and stirring it that way just until it slightly thickens. And then you can turn the power on and just let it go for a few minutes until it is smooth and lump free. And then I'm going to take a whole container of Cool Whip, Whip Topping, whatever you have, and I'm just going to fold that in. Next, I'm just going to be taking out a 9 by 13 casserole dish that I have sprayed with some nonstick cooking spray. And I'm just gonna layer it with some chocolate graham crackers. And then I'm going to put half of that pudding mixture on top. And then I'm just gonna repeat that layer again, ending with graham crackers on top.
For the last step, you're going to need a container of chocolate frosting. I took off the lid and the foil lining and I just popped it in my microwave for one minute. And then I just poured it all over the top. And then I'm just going to take my baking dish and kind of work it around just to try to get everything covered on top without having to touch it with a spatula or anything. And I'm just going to let this chill in the fridge for several hours to set up. And here is what it looks like when it was done. The foil kind of stuck to the top so it looks a little funky, but this is seriously so easy and so good. So I made that cake because we had some friends over for a little last minute Labor Day party. So we also grilled out some cheeseburgers and had chili dogs with just some chips on the side. It has been a really long time since I have had a charcoal grilled food and it just turned out so amazing but that is going to wrap up this week i hope you guys enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching i hope you all have an awesome week and i'll see you in my next video